I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. There comes a point in your reefing career when your reef is doing so well that the reef and the corals in it need a helping hand. You know you've reached that point when you can't maintain your alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium levels by water changes and just dosing calc. Wait, you have to dose calc before going to dosing pumps or a calcium reactor? Dosing calc on your reef tank can eliminate the need for a dosing pump or a calcium reactor. One of my clients ran a very successful reef tank for years by just dosing calc. Now, if you don't want to mess with calc, when you can't maintain your alkalinity, calcium, magnesium levels through water changes alone, then it's time to make that decision between a calcium reactor or dosing pumps. Here's the rundown of each way to supplement your tank. Dosing, often referred to as two-part dosing, involves adding liquid chemicals to your tank, usually through a dosing pump, hence the name dosing. The most common chemicals added are alkalinity and calcium. Magnesium and trace elements are sometimes added as well. You can either mix up these chemicals yourself or purchase them pre-made. A dosing setup requires a dosing pump, some tubing, and the liquid to be dosed. The dosing pump can be a standalone pump or one that relies on a controller to function. The footprint on a dosing setup is small and they can be inexpensive. Of course, you get what you pay for, so don't go cheap on the pump. Dosing pumps can be really easy to adjust as you tell the pump to run for more or less time and therefore dose more or less liquid. Supplementing your tank through a calcium reactor involves injecting carbon dioxide from a pressurized CO2 cylinder into a calcium reactor to reduce the pH of the water in the reactor. The low pH, usually around 6.5, dissolves the media in the reactor and makes the water coming out of the reactor, called a fluent, rich in alkalinity and calcium. Trace elements are also released from the media and get added to your tank. Calcium reactor setups are more complex and require more parts and therefore more money to set up. You're going to need a calcium reactor, media for the reactor, feed pump to the reactor, a CO2 cylinder, CO2 regulator, and a pH controller. Note that your tank controller can handle the pH control for a calcium reactor. Adjusting a calcium reactor requires finding a balance between flow rate, CO2 bubble size, frequency of CO2 injection, as well as internal pH of the reactor. That sounds like a lot and is actually straightforward. I set a constant flow rate, CO2 bubble size, and injection frequency, and then manipulate internal pH for the reactor. If a calcium reactor looks so complex, why not just use a dosing pump? The answer has to do with long-term costs, effort on your part, and the size of your tank. As your tank gets bigger, a calcium reactor is easier on you and your wallet. Around the 200 gallons of tank size is where the calcium reactor versus dosing pump equation starts to change. For tanks around the 200 gallon size and larger, once they're full of growing coral, then it takes lots of two-part solution to maintain alkalinity and calcium levels. For example, here's a 500 gallon tank full of growing coral. It consumes a half gallon each of alkalinity and calcium a day. For most reefers who don't have a lot of space, if a five gallon bucket was the largest dosing container that you had, Every 10 days, more solution would have to be mixed up in the bucket refilled. 10 days might not sound like a lot, and I promise you mixing up that much two-part and adding it to the bucket would get old fast. Even if you only had to refill the containers once every couple of weeks, it would still get old and get old fast. Okay, so how do you decide if you're gonna go the dosing route or the calcium reactor route? First, tank size. If your tank is over 200 gallons, I'd go the calcium reactor route. Under 200 gallons, two-part is on my radar. If your tank is very small, like nano tank small, then two-part is the way to go as I've yet to see a viable nano calcium reactor. Second, space. If you've got a space constraint, two-part dosing is more attractive. You can always buy or build a larger or smaller container for the two-part solution depending on how much space you have. With a calcium reactor, reactor size is set and you still need room for the CO2 bottle as well. Third, reef junkie or not. If you're a reef junkie, then a calcium reactor is right up your alley. The complex look of a calcium reactor likely turns you on, and I can't blame you. Gear is cool! For your reef enthusiasts, it's a draw. A calcium reactor is less maintenance, especially long term. And with two-part dosing, adjusting to how much element is added is simple as typing in a number or increasing a dosing interval. Whichever route you go, automate it and automate it with quality gear. Both calcium reactors and dosing pumps can overdose your tank, which can cause big issues like fish and coral death. 
Given what's on the line with either of these supplement solutions, I don't skimp out on cheap equipment. After running a calcium reactor for years on my tank and even remotely on clients' tanks, I have no problems recommending a calcium reactor. My calcium reactor maintains my alkalinity calcium and magnesium and trace element levels in my tank, and it does it all automatically. Every two to three months, I put more media in the calcium reactor and occasionally I swap out the CO2 bottle. It happens all automatically in the background with minimal input from me, which is what I'm looking for in a tank automation series. Now, if you're going the two-part route, nothing wrong with it. I've run two-part on tanks and they've been very successful. For me, given my tank size and the amount of coral growth that I have going on in here, a calcium reactor makes more sense. So whether you go two-part or a calcium reactor, first, look, give yourself a pat on the back. You've made it way down the line in terms of reefers. Most people set up a tank and then it doesn't go very well and they quit. And then a fewer amount of people put corals in it. And then an even fewer amount of people keep them successfully for some amount of time. And then even fewer amount of people need a tank to be dosed with a calcium reactor or with two-part solution. So you've made it this far, you're way ahead of the power curve. Dose your tank or add a calcium reactor to it and then keep going far down the line of coral growth. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.